The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show. We're going to go back in history today, and we're going to review as what type of nutrition, what type of diet people were eating thousands, hundreds of years ago at the Antarctica, the Indians. Uh, and you, you'll find this very interesting. What type uh, were they eating? Mainly sugar, ma many fats, mainly uh, protein. Uh, you'll find this fascinating. Uh, and what's uh, interesting, uh, f for example, uh, that weight is tightly controlled in nature, especially animals, but not us humans so much partly, but not as well, for example, as my pet woodchuck. <laughs> yes, that's been living under my house 20 years. I've been counting the years, you think. He'd have died a long time ago, but now he's got a wife and he's got children. And I'm ob observing right in front of my window. I sit at in the mornings when the sun is coming up. I've been looking at them, including the deer and their youngsters and the rabbits and the birds and, the, yes, uh, occasionally even an eagle. <laughs> so I've learned a lot about nutrition from animals. And I notice in the, in the spring, you know, around May or so, uh, he reappears because he's been hibernating, but we humans don't hibernate. And when he goes into hibernation, in, in around November or so, he's really fat. Yeah, he's re really fat. When he comes out in the spring, he looks perfect. You see nothing but uh, uh, the muscles. The trouble is that we have lost a, a hormone or enzyme uh, that uh, look around, look around, and I'm not being judgmental, but us humans are getting a lot bigger. And, and we're going to discuss the reasons why, and the trouble is, is that has resulted in a tremendous amount of uh, disease, uh, uh, probably 200 different diseases, which could be prevented uh, because we don't have a fat switch or a sugar switch like Woody does. See, Woody uh, accumulates this fat, and he lives off of that all winter long. His basic metabolic rate drops down very low. His temperature drops um, down so he de doesn't have to use as much uh, energy. And, uh, but we humans are eating and eating all year round. Food is readily available now since the agricultural uh, revolution. Uh, uh, and uh, we're developing a lot of illnesses, which Woody doesn't have. Woody's very helpful. So let's review this a little bit. And, try to gather some in. Uh, what happened to us? Why are we two-thirds over, overweight, okay? And, and so there are many benefits of being uh, overweight. Uh, we, we survive, and animals take advantage of that, but they make up for that through hibernation in that they can get rid of it. We don't get rid of it. Uh, uh, and uh, so, um, where do the animals put on fat? Uh, most of it is under the skin like us, but there are like, like birds, for, for example, they put it mainly 
in the liver. The hummingbird that flies in front of me, I had one this morning, fly right at me because I was <laughs> wearing this jacket. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, the hummingbird thought this was a fruit tree. Came real close, this close, the wings flapping away at, at tremendous rates of speed, so great an exercise. But you can look right through the skin and it looks white. That's because it's 40% fat. Uh, uh, and, and the liver has just gone like this. Uh, and the hummingbird lives off of that. Uh, but every 12 hours it has, has to uh, eat, uh, eat again. Uh, and it, so the animals convert a lot of it to triglycerides, some deposited in the liver. And we humans put it under the skin, in the liver, in the organs, and the uh, pancreas, creating a lot, a lot of uh, uh, problems. And uh, so animals prepare for famine when there's no food. And that's what Woody you know, is, is doing. And by storing fat, uh, by, by, by becoming insulin resistant, insulin can, can not get sugar into the cell, but it gets it into the fat cell, uh, and the fat cells get bigger and the animal uh, gets bigger. So it's hormonally controlled. It's not calories in, calories out. That theory uh, has been disproven. We are not just calories in and calories out because we have hormones in our body uh, which affect metabolism, the rate we use things, where we store things. Uh, and that's regulated by the adrenal gland, the, the pancreas, uh, the liver, the brain, the pituitary gland, hypothalamus. So our brain uh, uh, controls uh, these um, uh, hormones. And uh, so, uh, so obesity in humans is due to insulin uh, resistance and we increase fat by the habits in animals too, except uh, they use up the fat while we keep it because we've lost the enzyme, uh, perhaps it's not been totally proven that's uh, doing that. So, but the most likely hormone though uh, is insulin. That's the strongest hormone. That's the one that pushes sugar in, in, into the uh, uh, cell. And uh, uh, pancreatic enzymes control our blood sugar level uh, as well as other hormones but, uh, but the uh, insulin puts the sugar into the cell, and this glucagon is made in the pancreas too, uh, uh, which uh, reduces, uh, uh, which increases the blood sugar level. You wake up in the morning, for example, uh, and through circadian rhythm, glucagon is secreted, which increases your sugar level, so to make your sugar level very evil. The adrenal gland gets ready for stress, does the same thing. Growth hormone in the pituitary gland does the same thing. So in the morning, actually, like, like uh, myself, we're actually not very hungry. We're, all, all, we're eating breakfast. We're breaking our fast overnight and eating breakfast. 200 years ago, people didn't eat breakfast. We're now uh, have been eating it uh, 420 odd years or more, uh, and now we're eating three meals instead of two, and the population is getting bigger. So eating three meals actually may not be uh, a, a good uh, thing to do. Just to talk about diabetes a minute since we brought it up, type one is where the pancreas died uh, and we don't produce uh, uh, insulin that can happen through autoimmune disease, but people don't realize it also happens in, in big time uh, milk drinkers. Mm -hmm. Also people who can't toler tolerate gluten proteins they too can knock out the pancreas, become type 1. They need insulin to survive. No insulin, they, wa they waste away and many of them died. But we've uh, have had insulin uh, available uh, originally actually from, from um, animals, but now we can manufacture it in the laboratory uh, and uh, um, you can buy it, although it's very expensive. And these pharmaceutical companies with the government helping them have been able to keep the price high uh, because the people that have type 1 diabetes uh, can survive without it. Type 2 diabetic, uh, where 
the blood sugar level goes up because of insulin resistance. Insulin doesn't work, and, um, uh, and the people are, are, are gaining weight. But, but the pancreas secretes more insulin, more insulin, but eventually it kills the pancreas. The pancreas is dead, so now they need insulin too. So both types, and actually 90% of the diabetics in this nation are, are type 2 diabetics, 20% of which became type 1. Mm -hmm. Totally dependent on insulin, uh, and so just looking at somebody, can you tell that that they're uh, diabetic? Well, if you get a pot belly, odds are you're diabetic. You get to prove it to me that you're not. You need to get a serum insulin test, fasting blood sugar, glucose tolerance test. When that's testing people uh, with serum insulin, which is a bad mistake. Uh, and and then the science is out there, uh, we, but we need to do that test children starting at age three. I know that science industry, government has prevented that so they can make a lot of money selling the drugs when diabetes could be prevented 90% of the time, and I teach that all the time. So uh, thin people, but you are what your blood test is. Thin people can be diabetic. About 23% of the people that look perfectly thin are indeed uh, uh, diabetic Asians, especially, have just a little bit of belly fat, and, and a lot of them are diabetics. So you are what your blood test is, serum insulin, fasting blood sugar, glucose tolerance uh, uh, test. I had mine done a week ago, um, incidentally, and my serum insulin was like a two. My blood sugar was 89, uh, and, and I'm 39 for the 47th time. So get your test done. I'm not bragging, I'm just demonstrating what I am teaching. Uh, uh, and uh, a Swedish uh, MD, Dr. Conlon, uh, put together what's called metabolic syndrome signs that were leading to diabetes, high blood pressure, overweight, uh, uh, pot, uh, pot belly, uh, elevated blood sugar, uh, for example. So uh, now Dr. Raven, 1980s, uh, uh, then called this metabolic syndrome. That's syndrome X, he called it too. Uh, so we're debating, is fat good, is sugar good, uh, good? is uh, protein the way to eat? And I'm going to review that for you in history a bit, and you will be uh, uh, surprised. Uh, uh, and, uh, but animals use insulin resistance, uh, like my, my Woody here, to save their life. They, they, Fat is good, so I'm kind of, we're going to discuss today whether fat is good or bad. We all think uh, fat is bad, and the government for 50 years told us that fat is bad. But I'm going to tell you today, they were wrong. Uh, and, and I'm going to give you the science from history. Uh, and, and, and squirrels, too, incidentally, near wintertime uh, become fat, and, and they go into hibernation. And, and come out in the spring much thinner, and I observe that in, in, in nature. And, uh, and uh, a European bird, the garden wobbler, uh, doubles its weight before flying off to Africa. So what is he using for energy? We all need some, some energy. The fat that's in the body, which they first uh, collected so in, in the time they reached Africa, they're pretty thin. Uh, so they develop insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, whatever uh, you want to say. And, and, and like I said, uh, abdominal obesity in humans uh, and animals generally, uh, when they're not hibernating, uh, are thin. They have used up uh, their fat when they were hibernating. What we need to <laughs> to do is to hibernate. <laughs> Okay, uh, but uh, so signs in us uh, that we have metabolic syndrome, abdominal obesity, triglycerides in the blood are over 150. Uh, we have a low uh, 
H HDL, high LDL, those are uh, cholesterol fats, blood pressure goes up. Uh, and uh, so some, and like some already mentioned, uh, uh, some animals ha live, uh, accumulate tremendous amount of fat uh, from, from sugar, like the, the hummingbird. Uh, and, but, they, but they can get sugars for many different things from flowering plants. Uh, an example was the hummingbird that came at me today because I had a, a flowering uh, a jacket. Fortunately, when it was here, uh, scanned the data that I made, finally flew, flew away realizing that, that I was not a, not a flower. Uh, and, uh, and, they, and their metabolism is so fast the heart rate is like 2,000 beats a minute or, or more, and they, they use up the fats and sugar very quickly. Uh, uh, and, 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 and back in, in time, uh, that uh, genetics controlled some of our ability to uh, store fat in Africa. Uh, 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 f for example, and in, and in history, uh, and, and if you look at the kings and queens of yesteryear when sugar was first uh, uh, discovered, you know, in, in the Philippines and New Guinea, it was first a little plant on the f floor, but then they uh, discovered uh, uh, trees, uh, and, and it makes you feel good. It goes to the brain, t turns out uh, serotonin and dopamine levels in the brain, and you feel good. And, but nobody could afford the, the sugar, but the kings and queens could, and some of them became of tremendous size. S some weighed four, five, six hundred pounds, and, 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 the, uh, and, and many of the kings of the past were extremely obese. Queen Elizabeth, uh, 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 the one of the uh, 1700s or so, uh, was, had, had no teeth, for example, because sh sh our gums and bacteria in our gums are sugar eaters. They eat sugar. So you see pictures of them, <laughs> all the teeth are gone. Uh, yeah, if you want, so you brush the teeth of your kids, especially if they eat a lot of sugar because they'll destroy their teeth. And say myself, I didn't know about brushing my teeth till I was almost in college. Uh, and, and I had plenty of infections in my teeth. So tell your kids to brush their teeth and use mouthwash at least twice a day, and maybe three times, uh, three times uh, a day. Uh, but in some African tribes, especially the women, it was thought that, that they needed to be overweight during the pregnancy, uh, and uh, they developed tremendous collections of fat on their body. They call it steatopigy, steatopigy. And they would have their backs and their buttocks be of huge size. And it was considered a, a sign of beauty, except I remind you in humans, uh, that is questionable because the people that are overweight have diabetes. It's got a couple hundred diseases associated with it, and you don't want that. Uh, and matter of fact, you can pick up for me a flyer, which I hold up for you just for a minute here. Uh, if you contact me, I'll send it to you uh, on email. Uh, prevents diabetes and diabetes, all the diseases associated, not all of them, but uh, uh, in this picture. Uh, and it is uh, uh, scary, and these, many of these are fatal, including mental disease, dementia, thyroid disease, eye disease, blindness, sudden heart attacks, 50% of heart attacks, you just drop over. So we could, I'll cover that on, on another lecture. Uh, so uh, it's very important as to, uh, and how, as to what we consume, uh, it, it changed through evolution, okay? Uh, and, but we needed food to survive. And, but it was not, it was not available uh, till uh, we developed agriculture about 9,000 years ago, and we existed mainly on fat, 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to review that for you. The ancients ate mainly fat, uh, and uh, uh, but but their life is scheduled. Ours is not scheduled since agriculture and fast food. We can eat any old time, and that indeed is a problem. Uh, so we don't have a regulated uh, way of eating unless we're in prison, <laughs> and then probably will give us lousy food. And uh, so we don't have a fat switch like animals uh, have. And, what, and, and they're thinking now that uric acid may be the fat switch. Uh, and, but, but we'll go, go into that further. And, uh, and that's the reason uh, that we're ga gaining weight. There's nothing automatically a hormone pituitary that goes like that. Just you have enough calories in you, don't eat any more. We're, we're missing that. We're not hibernating. And uh, so is human obesity regulated? Slightly maybe, but not completely. Um, uh, but we've activated the same program all animals use uh, to uh, increase our energy stores. Uh, and uh, so the theory of energy in and energy out, which we held for many years, uh, the Anthro Keys, for example, uh, promoted that big time as well as the government. The McGovern Commission uh, uh, prom promoted that, but they forgot about the hormones in our body, which regulate the, uh, our, our food and is more important. And uh, matter of fact, the first law of thermodynamics uh, uh, says uh, that you cannot increase or decrease energy. So if you take a certain amount of energy in, uh, you, you will give out a certain amount of energy, but that law doesn't think about the laws are 50 hormones in our body uh, that uh, change the nature of our energy. Of our, uh, energy. And uh, today we're drinking all these uh, sugary drinks, which have, uh, we've had a 2,000% increase in food drinks, which are full of uh, sugar. And now they change them. They, uh, have fructose in them, and fructose, uh, which uh, comes from corn, the government supports the price. A lot of people are drinking these sugary drinks now, uh, and fructose is metabolized largely in the liver, uh, but it overwhelms the liver very quickly, and then it, fructose is converted to fat. A lot of it goes, 20% or so goes to the kidney and destroys the kidney, yes. And uh, so uh, there are many factors uh, in our body playing into it. And uh, so uh, in the 1980s, uh, Europe was saying about the, about the U.S., and they were eating the same food that we were eating, uh, uh, and maybe a little bit of different food. They were eating more fat uh, than we were eating. And they said, well, the reason we're, we, we look overweight and are sick more than they are is because we're not exercising, but they're wrong. Ex exercise is not, it's important, but it's not the main thing by a long shot. And uh, 21 states in our country have laws uh, where you can't sue a fast food company. See, the fast food people uh, uh, use processed food uh, where they take away the good part of uh, uh, plants and feed us the sugar uh, and, and, and use fructose, which they wrap everything in, um, uh, the, the, the donuts and the cookie and the, and the muffin, and we're becoming a very sickly nature. And, but a lot of those have in the chemicals from food that make us feel so good, that, so, that stimulate our serotonin and dopamine levels that we can't help ourselves. We are sugar addicts. I debated that one time on one of these shows here uh, with, with uh, 
a lady, and I think she won the debate, she said sugar is more addictive than cocaine. I tend to agree. I, I tend to agree. And the reason it affects us more too is because we have to eat. That's how we get our energy. Incidentally, viruses that are infecting all the people, what do they use for energy? How anybody I talk to knows, it's sugar. So the, di the diabetics who have more sugar in the cells are the ones who are mainly dying from the coronavirus 19 viruses, but they also will more commonly die from other viruses coming down in the future, the monkeypox and whatever. Influenza has a high death rate uh, every year, and they're doing very little about it. Well, we can't vaccinate against all of it. I mean, some we can. Uh, and a lot of people are dying. Well, if they, Fauci would, and the government would tell the people that the uh, sugar, that the viruses, uh, bacteria, are sugar eaters, especially the viruses, bacteria can make their own metabolic system, some of them, uh, that get rid of your diabetes about a month, you can get rid of it 90% of the time. We wouldn't be dying, dying from these infections. So uh, uh, obesity is uh, an abnormal appetite, okay, uh, with a decreased satiety response. Nothing is telling us to stop. Uh, normally, as the sugar level goes down, the insulin level goes down, the fat cells open up and go to the liver and they turn into ketones, so we use them now, for energy and the appetite is turned off. You can eat ketones and the blood sugar will be like that and you won't get hungry. But we develop re resistance to the working of these um, hormones. Uh, so there are, so in animals, they have satiety signals uh, in the brain. Uh, Dr. Jeff Friedman uh, discovered them. Uh, and it's a, it's a leptin hormone, the fat hormone, the one that, tur the one that turns your appetite uh, off. Grenlin in the stomach, a hormone turns the appetite on, and leptin turns the appetite off. But in humans, uh, we develop leptin resistance, so uh, it, our appetite is not well regulated. Uh, but other hormones affect the appetite. Insulin, which I mentioned, which is the most important. Ghrelin in, in the stomach turns appetite on. Uh, so, uh, and, and the leptin, the uh, uh, helps control us. So these hormones control our appetite. Uh, our leptin level, though, is just like the insulin level. And these all interact. And the ghrelin and the leptin and the insulin and the glucagon as, as to what our appetite is, but, but insulin is the most important of all. Uh, so obesity is regulated in culture uh, and, and, and is affected by our appetite, our satiety. So uh, that, that we are seeing so many people overweight, it's deregulated. It is deregulated. Uh, so uh, we're addicted to food. This is a real problem. Uh, obesity is a consequence of a reduced ability to burn fat, which uh, is a resistance. Uh, so ATP, that's our energy molecule, uh, is made in our mitochondria. The mitochondria in every cell in your body Thousands. Some have more than others. The heart has many because there's more, more work to do. The brain, the brain has many. Um, and, and what provides the energy in the mitochondria, the mitochondria factories? Fatty acids and, and, and sugar. Fatty acids are very effective and donate a phosphate group uh, uh, and uh, create a great deal of energy. Uh, glucose also. Uh, uh, produces some ATP, but not, but not as effective, okay? The obese, uh, they're not effective in burning fat. Uh, 
But fasting, not eating, can bring that on. For example, if you eat your last meal at 6 o'clock, and, and normally a lot of people would eat breakfast. I don't you know, eat breakfast. I don't eat till 11 or 12. I'm not hungry because the blood sugar level is like that, uh, and the sugar is down, the insulin goes down, and I'm living off of ketones, which the brain can use. They used to think only glucose can be used in the brain. No, no, no uh, ketones uh, are very effectively used uh, uh, in the brain, highly energetic. Uh, so obesity indeed is r regulated, and we mentioned that in uh, animals and my buddy Woody, uh, where he loads up with, with food all summer long and becomes like this, and then one, then one day he, he goes into hi hibernation, uh, his insulin resistance uh, uh, goes away, uh, and he's living mainly off of fat. If you're living off of fat, you're not producing uh, any urine, uh, and, that, and, and you generally don't uh, need to defecate, but you might accumulate a few things, so sometimes the m metabolic rate will uh, increase, and they'll, they'll do the thing, and then it lowers. Again, in the spring comes out this uh, beautiful uh, animal, so it's high, Rudy, I've had a nice winter. And uh, uh, the, uh, so uh, the, the burning of fat is a resp response to, to starvation. He's starving now because he, because, uh, uh, he is in hibernation. And, uh, but, but we don't hi hibernate, okay? And uh, the cortisone levels and uric acid levels uh, are increased in animals and it allows them uh, to uh, get fat, so it's a switch in their body, and uh, and the uric acid is produced from protein metabolism, uh, and is that the signal that that turns that switches the metabolic system uh, where you can live just off the fat for a few months and hibernate? We're not sure, but but they're wondering about that, and uh, uh, so that could be the metabolic switch. So maybe uric acid levels uh, are the metabolic switch. A uric acid level does have a disease associated with it, and that's gout. And I have noticed myself that in patients that I have that are uh, overweight uh, and diabetic, a significant number have gout, which causes terrible pain. So to, to avoid uh, uh, gout, it is important to keep your weight under control is much higher uh, in diabetics. And people are extremely obese, commonly uh, have the gout. It's, it's really almost God's punishment uh, for eating too much of the wrong uh, food. Uh, so uh, uric acid may be the metabolic switch, and it stimulates fat accumulation. Uh, and. Uh, and, and this uric acid level, these patients that have the gout, the uric acid level is elevated. So it helps regulate the fat uh, uh, content. content. Uh, fructose, uh, sucrose, sugar, is half glucose, half fructose. Fructose will not increase the insulin level, but it goes straight to the liver. Uh, and it's metabolized in the liver. And if there's too much fructose, it gets converted to fat, and about 20% attacks the kidney and can uh, kill the kidney. Uh, there were sugars available in ancient times, like in Egypt. Uh, the the uh, uh, bees, uh, uh, for example, uh, love to eat uh, sugar, uh, and, and, and they make their uh, uh, constructions uh, where uh, they make uh, uh, juices that the bees love to eat, but, but we ourselves love to eat it uh, too. Maple trees uh, put out sugar uh, uh, too. And now uh, let's talk about saturated fats a little bit. Eating a saturated, a saturated rich diet 
make sure blood levels of saturated fats actually go down. Yes, remember what I, what I uh, said, they get, in the liver get converted, uh, the saturated fat gets converted to ketones, and the high, very small, high, highly energetic molecules, uh, and we use them for uh, energy, uh, and it takes fat to make these ketones. So actually, you maybe you think uh, eating a high fat diet is just bad for you, you're gonna get fatter. No, you get thinner. That's now known in, in science. Let's go back in history a little bit. You'll find this to be uh, interesting. In 1907, a Harvard-trained Canadian anthropologist who studied things in, in the past, Stephenson, Stephenson uh, uh, went to the Antarctic, Antarctic and, and spent nine months among the Inuit, Inuit, the, na the natives, okay? He moved right in with them, lived with them, learned their language, and ate the way they ate. Uh, no external food supply. And eight months later, he came out speaking their language, had eaten only their food, and he was perfectly happy, and he ate 95, 98% fat, the blubber, the blubber of a fish, yes. Uh, he ate uh, no, no source of uh, protein, and, and he uh, only a little bit of carbohydrate, which uh, was in some plants uh, that they had there. And he did this for 10 years, two years at a time, and he wrote about it. Unfortunately, 1915, 1925, we were starting to discover vitamins and they hit the news, health recommendations, big time. It was an industry at work. Some of those caused specific diseases and were necessary, but many of them were not uh, necessary. And let's remember, Stefansson uh, did not get any of those vitamins. He was perfectly healthy because this upset the industry, okay? Uh, so they really attacked him, but he said, okay, I'll enter Bellevue Hospital in New York with one other person, and they ate only the way the Inuit ate uh, in Antarctica. That's all they ate, and they emerged after a year perfectly healthy, never having taken one of these vitamins, for example. I tell you, you know what that reminds me of? Because I, I gave a lecture on it recently and I really uh, studied in detail many, many books. The statin story. Almost everybody I talked to is on, on a statin. At one of the local hospitals, all the people that had cardiac back surgery. Uh, I know a nurse, some nurses that work there and they, and they checked uh, and, and told me 80% of the people that were operating on were on statin medication. I found in these books uh, that statin actually causes heart disease. This is true. Don't stop the medication. Start the medication unless you read this stuff or show it to your doctor. See what he thinks. I even got a bigger book than this, but here's an example, the dark side of statins. Uh, just read the summary and you, your jaws will drop if you're on a statin. But I didn't say stop it, I didn't say start it. Gather information, discuss it with your doctor. But I have another uh, book that's about five times bigger than that, and it's all the diseases that statin cause affects the brain, affects the, the teeth, the eyes, the heart, the lungs, it causes muscles to fail. Mm -hmm. I know somebody, a relative of mine, that had tremendous uh, weakness and, and, and muscle pain. I know somebody else had their back fused because what they saw in the x-ray turns out it was the muscles that were weak. The thing on the x-rays was a coincidence. Yes, interesting. Uh, and and uh, so it, y you gotta be careful and check and, and read and get other opinions before acting and making big uh, decision. Uh, and uh, so, 
1920, uh, uh, it, Stephenson, because he'd been in Antarctica, uh, kind of became like a buck deer with a target on him because all these people are making money from vitamins. Mm -hmm. uh, iron him, and, and like I said, he then went to Bellevue Hospital and studied for the year. Uh, but uh, that didn't convince those people either. And, uh, but it's very similar to the Stanton story. But uh, let's go back a little further in history yet. Uh, uh, the, the, the in uh, Persia, uh, they uh, started, discovered uh, sugar cane, okay, around five to seven hundred uh, after the birth of Christ. Obesity and diabetes were seen uh, by a Persian physician, uh, and sugar cane groves existed in Egypt in 600 uh, A.D., next few, few centuries, we saw sugar eaten a great deal in Cyprus and Crete, uh, and it slowly moved through Africa, heading to Spain, and eventually made its way into um, uh, England. Uh, and in, in Europe, we think sugar entered uh, through Venice on, on ships about 990. Uh, A.D. St. Thomas Aquinas, a priest, uh, loved sugar, 1200, and there's a picture of him in, in, in some of these books, and he clearly is severely uh, obese. But remember uh, that sugar makes you feel good. Uh, if there is a donut in my house tonight uh, laying there by itself, I guarantee you probably 100% I'd be eating it, although I never eat like that, uh, is that our eyes will lock in and serotonin uh, and dopamine will be secreted. The quick feel-good hormone and the serotonin, the long feel-good hormone. So that's wired into us in evolution to seek food to stay alive. That's an evolutionary response, but you can decrease it, okay? and. Uh, uh, it's somewhat similar to alcohol. Alcohol is a, a form of uh, sugar. Uh, so th that also affects the liver and, and, and makes you obese. We, we talk about uh, adipose rex syndrome, uh, which uh, many leaders of countries and, ch and the church had, and, 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 and they, they even use the word obese in the, in the name. William the Conqueror, 1028 A.D., Louis the uh, 16th, King of France, was very obese. Uh, Pope Leo X, 1475, very o obese. King Frederick of Württemberg, Germany, 1750, very obese. And they showed pictures of them in these books uh, that, that I'm reading. So it is so addictive, they just cannot uh, help it. Uh, they even, some even would have big affairs, uh, invite queens of other countries, and they would build houses, statues out of sugar, mm -hmm. and ask them to take them home as presents. So it goes to show you the addictive power of, uh, of uh, uh, sugar. And uh, uh, and they made life-size effigies that, that you could uh, walk around on. Because mainly the, the rich were involved with this because sugar was expensive. It, it, and then they used slavery to bring sugar because it was too expensive to, to grow it uh, ourselves. So the English uh, developed a slavery for a couple of hundred years. And, uh, but eventually sugar did make its way to the poor. Uh, and 1420, Madeira Island, uh, Columbus took sugar cane with him, uh, and a lady, a queen, her husband had died, and he stayed there a long time. So, but we don't know if it was her or the sugar cane, but he took 
some of the sugarcane with him and transported it to the Canary Islands. Uh, and then ev uh, uh, ev eventually uh, to the U.S. Uh, so uh, there was a triangle trade of sugar going on between uh, Europe, Africa, uh, America, uh, and, and then the slaves got involved because of tremendous money involved in the thing till slavery was outlawed. Um, a pharmacist uh, in Berlin, uh, a German, in introduced sugar beets as a source of sugar, partly because of wars. Uh, there was uh, the Eng English and the Dutch con controlled the sugar trade, uh, uh, actually, but the, a pharmacist in 1709 extracted sugar from beets. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then one of his assistants figured out how, how to make a business out of it. Uh, and then Napoleon got involved in 1806 in the Napoleon Wars. But outside of Paris, they probably had 100 uh, plants that made sugar from beets. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's so addictive. Our brain uh, loves it, makes us uh, feel good. Uh, and the trouble is it created a tremendous number of diseases. Uh, and it was the beginning of, of obesity and, and gout, remember, is related to and, and diabetes and heart disease. And uh, uh, here's an interesting one. Gout is a physician's name for the uh, rheumatism of the rich patient. Okay. Matter of fact, I know of someone recently was having a lot of knee pain and they were diabetic and had some swelling of a leg. And, and I thought, well, maybe it's a brace that they're wearing on the leg. But after, re after reading all this, you know what I'm thinking? You know the answer already. That person has the gout. We've ordered a uric acid, you see. But I kind of, doesn't make sense to you? Gout is closely associated uh, in the uric acid, remember? The uric acid may be the switch uh, that, uh, we, that we don't have the uric acid switch that animals have uh, where they can switch uh, into fat metabolism uh, and live off of that. That's really what we need. We need a uric acid uh, switch in humans Maybe someone could come up with a drug uh, like that so we don't have to hibernate to get rid of the f fat that's in our organs and on our body. Like I said, people can look perfectly skinny and be diabetic uh, because there's fat in their liver and fat in their pancreas and they're not secreting any uh, uh, insulin or glucagon hormones. And uh, sort of interesting. Uh, Let's learn some more low-carb lessons from ab Aboriginal uh, cultures. Uh, two million years ago, uh, primates, not humans said primates, uh, dinosaurs, mon monkeys, uh, monkeys, uh, would, uh, have to chase down the animals and eat them. And uh, what, what, were, what were they eating? Uh, the, the animals didn't have much carbohydrate uh, in them. Agriculture was not invented until about around eight, ten thousand 10,000 years ago. Yeah. They were eating mainly meat and fat. And, and the animals they were catching were mainly fat. So what did ancients eat? Mainly fat. Mainly fat. They had some meat on there, some protein. But it was um, uh, mainly fat. Uh, not till we developed agriculture did we bring in a lot of carbohydrates into our way of eating. And, uh, and in some areas of the world, this occurred only a century ago, 100 years, 200 years ago. Okay? And uh, so uh, the best observer is someone who lives among the people. Now we talk about Stefanson. There's another guy named uh, that, 
there's some other people who also uh, uh, did it. You know, uh, George Caitlin uh, lived uh, among the Plains Indians. What did they, what did, what did they, what did they eat? And that's, that's uh, interesting. And we know Stephenson uh, lived among the Inuit. Uh, John Orr lived among the Maasai uh, Indians. All said, hunting and herding people had esteem for fat. Mm -hmm. Had esteem for fat. Uh, and and uh, buffalo hunting in the fall uh, from grazing. They became overweight, had a lot of uh, uh, fat, uh, and then the Plains Indians would kill them uh, to make pemmican, P-E-M-M-I-C-N-N, -M -M which is a mixture of dried meat and hot fat that cools to become a stable block sealed in a raw hide sack. And then they keep, could keep it for months or even, or even a year or even sell it or eat it or uh, eat it. So they were eating uh, mainly fat. The meat was a small part of it. Matter of fact, a lot of the meat they fed uh, uh, to, to the uh, animals. So the pemmican was a mixture of dried meat and hot fat, which cooled to become a stable block, sealed in a sack. And... Uh, uh, if they hunted in the fall uh, along migration routes, uh, it would be more, more uh, liquid uh, from the fat, and they would store that too. And listen to this, it gets more interesting. On the Pacific Coast, California, Canada, uh, on, the, on the west, and uh, what, what they, they also... Uh, would get some, some meat from the caribou, and so did the Indians. They hunted the caribou also, uh, besides the, the, the buffalo. Uh, but they uh, would catch a fish, a s smelt like fish, uh, also called ulichan, double O L I C H A N, double O L I C H A N, which was also called a candlestick because the skeleton of the fish, after they removed uh, uh, the meat, uh, they could hang off a ceiling or the side of a, 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 of a tent uh, and, and light it and use it as a candle. So they called it a candlestick uh, fish. That fish only appeared in April for one week. <laughs> they go in the marches and the St. Lawrence River uh, and, 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 and they would uh, catch it. Uh, and, and package it up uh, in cedar boxes made from cedar trees uh, and use it to trade from, from furs to copper to, they go up the, on a canoe, they go up the river uh, all, all the way to the East Coast and was sent to Europe uh, for trade. To, to, and they would buy the goods uh, with it and eat it themselves. This fat was mainly uh, saturated fat and some monosaturated fat, so it could easily uh, be stored and would be hard and, and it'd be good in the cedar boxes for a year or two. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, you got to say, that's uh, uh, fascinating. So what did the ancients eat in Arctica and the Indians? In the Pacific Coast, it's fat. And we were told for 50 years, fat is bad. Sugar is good. And that's what's killing us today. This is advice from our government, our medical system, us doctors told you, uh, fat is bad, sugar is good. A huge mistake which has killed a lot of people, disabled a lot of people, and is still killing them today and the hospitals and medicine today is still making a huge living from that. I know because I've been and talked to these hospitals about it. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, tremendous amount of heart disease, that's where the big uh, money is located, uh, 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 as well as 
medicine today doesn't understand that this thing through hormones affects the rest of the body. They operate on the x-rays. Oh, you got all these changes in the x-rays, you need a back fusion. When in reality, uh, that the pain is from weak muscles, from, from uh, being overweight, or maybe they were on a statin drug, uh, which uh, interferes with about five metabolic pathways. And, and that's what's filling our hospitals. And most of that could be uh, avoided. And I doubt that it will ever change. There's so much money involved. I'm trying. I talk to the people. I get uh, books, radio shows, TV shows. I see people for free trying to change the system. And I hope more people's, people are stepping, stepping up to bat because I walk down the street, a lot of people were talking to me about it, that they're watching these uh, shows. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, and when uh, we think of Stephenson, uh, that, and the opinions of other people, uh, that the natives were eating a good 80% fat diet, uh, there's a, maybe a little bit of carbohydrate and meat, maybe 15% uh, uh, protein, and the rest is eating a fat diet. So the Indians, so the people on the Pacific Coast, and that's what we should be doing. Uh, so the Pemmican fat was a staple of the bison people. In the Great Plains of America, uh, summer Pemmican became standard and trade item of the 18th and 19th century. They sent it up the, can up the uh, uh, canoes. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, that I have pretty much that you now understand what I'm speaking about. And when I tell people how to eat properly, I put together this pyramid here, which is in my diabetic book. And uh, I try to get a copy to you. Uh, if you contact uh, me, I can email it to you uh, or give you a copy uh, in person. What I'm saying is a good way of eating uh, to live to be 100 and play pickleball with me or tap dance with me. I'm, you know, 39 for the 47 times, so I'm getting, clo getting closer. Just to eat about 60% good fat, learn what good fats are, maybe 20 5% protein at most, uh, and, and make it uh, a protein, protein that's been raised, and not in a, in a factory f uh, farm, and about 15% uh, vegetables and fruit. Yeah, fruits are full of fructose, so you gotta be careful what fruit that you're eating. If it has a nut in it, it it's, it's low fructose, but uh, that learn, what the good fats are, the guacamole, the, the olives, uh, and, and the good fats, good fats uh, from milk. Don't drink a lot of milk because it has casein in it and the proteins that can cause some illnesses like type 1 diabetes. But learn more about this. Um, and at the bottom of the sheet, I have a QR code uh, right there, uh, which is access to hundreds of these TV shows, also access to Facebook where 10 minute posts in case one hour of <laughs> shows too much for you. So you can gain a lot of information. And this uh, other sheet you know, that I have that mentions uh, all these diseases caused by diabetes, I want you to avoid that, but I want you to know and be reassured that going back thousands of years that a high, good fat diet is the way to be healthy and live a long time. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for listening. But you need to gather some information. Remember what I said, too, about the statin story. Uh, I really have studied this. Uh, don't stop it or fail to take it. But, but show these books to the doctor, which I have done, and every one I ever showed it to stopped the medication on the patient 
which uh, includes some people that I know that have serious diseases, with the brain especially, who had taken a statin drug. Anyway, why I, I do this? I love you. I care about, about you. I am a doctor. It is my job. Next time you see me, play pickleball with me, uh, or see uh, if you like music and tap dance with me. I plan to do this as long as I can do it. I love you. Thank you.